Shalom Chavri, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We have breaking news, everything you can possibly imagine going on. From Syria, as many of you probably already aware, they did strikes. Uh, uh, there's been a lot of debate of where this has been, but according to Iranian news, the Turkish soldiers are in East Aleppo. This is where Syria struck and killed three Turkish soldiers. Now Al Jazeera is saying the casualty list is even higher. There's been 10 that have been wounded, and the latest report right now, unconfirmed, is that Russia and Turkey may have exchanged some more missiles even tonight. Not sure for, for uh, completely for sure as of yet. We also have breaking news, 7.2 or 3 earthquake over in El Salvador with a tsunami alert going on there. We have Israel burning up and the fires that are happening over there in Israel right now. Uh, and that is believed to be arson, and that's coming right out of Haifa, where that's happening there. Also, Jill Stein is also calling for a recount in three key battleground states there. Now, if this does happen, if these votes are recounted, and for some reason it switches and turns to Hillary Clinton, that could change the tide to this whole election altogether. What a mess that would end up being. RT also... If the EU Parliament resolutions to counter uh, Russian media implemented retaliation will follow according to Moscow. We're finding out that, 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 that you know, a lot of things on that. I'll go into that in just a moment here. Um, and uh, let's see here. One other issue here. I believe it was war in Syria. Okay, that's just some, some of the same things there. All right, let's kind of, let's take a look at all the things that are happening here, starting right here with RT and this report here. Uh, the European Parliament. They have drawn up resolution against the Russian media is against Russian media. They've included RT and Sputnik and are calling them both major propaganda tools. Now, why would they be considered propaganda tools? Because they don't carry the same narrative of BBC, uh, CNN, uh, MSNBC, uh, who, Fox, all the rest of these guys. No, they don't carry the same narrative necessarily. And they call it propaganda. Because why? The White Helmets happen to be a terrorist group and not really a uh, uh, humanitarian mission because RT has done an incredibly good job of exposing that. Not just RT. RT has not really been, been the one behind exposing the White Helmets as much as uh, reporters like Vanessa Bealey. And there are others out there as well that have ex clearly exposed the White Helmets for who they really are. American peace activists go into Syria only to find out that, yes, guess what? Uh, there's a lot of propaganda going on in the West. RT carries that. So does Sputnik. So does some other companies as well. But of course, the Western media is not going to carry it because they want to demonize Russia. They want to demonize Assad and make everybody over there look like a really bunch of bad guys. Because RT exposed that it never was uh, Assad that gassed his own people in uh, 2013 there with the sarin gas. It ended up coming through Turkey. And of course, there were Western hands on that sarin gas getting there, uh, and Clinton had a lot to do with that. So yes, I guess they are considered a propaganda machine. Must be what the problem is. It's just really absurd if you ask me. But anyway, America has its own issues right now. Maybe I shouldn't have done this with Sputnik. Maybe I should have done this with CNN. Exclusive Jill Stein tells Sputnik about vote recount campaign. Oh, that's kind of odd. Why would Jill Stein tell this to Sputnik? After all, it's just a propaganda media guy there, right? They're not going to tell the truth. It was Russia that caused all the problem. Oh, please, somebody give me a break. It's about ready to make me want to vomit. Anyway, Jill Stein, the Green Party's candidate in 2016 U.S. presidential race, has raised over $3.7 million in just over a day in an effort to, for, to force a vote recount in the key background states of Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. Speaking to Sputnik, Dr. Stein offered details about the motivation behind her effort. Now, what I'm really concerned about, though, is will this change the outcome of the presidential election if the recount is done? And if, for some reason, we find out that Ms. Clinton actually did win the presidential race, what kind of mess would we end up there? We'll have to wait and see on that. 
Uh, that's one thing's for sure. Let's jump over to Israel here. Israel, it is in a blaze right now. There is a tremendous number of pictures that are coming out. Uh, but anyway, arson is uh, uh, believed to be believed to be to blame uh, for what is going on in Israel. There, uh, let me see if we can just real quick find under latest news here. If maybe we can get it like this here. Um, there are schools that have been closing because due to the wildfires that are happening there in Israel. Uh, and of course, the prime minister has said that the arsonists there are considered to be terrorists. And I was trying to see if I could get any of the uh, really good photos there on that. Let me, I know how we can do that real quick because I want you to see. It, it is really uh, bad uh, going on in Israel right now. Very, very bad indeed. And um, let me just pull this up for you and stuff because the fires are just going like crazy. There's been a lot of outpour of help going, uh, going out for Israel. Uh, we can see here some people have done some really beautiful pictures here as well uh, for the state of Israel. This one right here, just really, really, um, just, you know, around the apartment buildings and stuff inside, in and around Haifa, uh, things just burning like crazy. You have this one here closer to a highway there. Um, again, just unbelievable number of wildfires. But uh, my understanding, uh, Greece, uh, Russia, and um, uh, several other countries have, have stepped up to help uh, Israel in fighting these uh, wildfires that have been set by arson and uh, some very, very serious fires going on. They're really burning majorly out of control. And this is, of course, Israel's rainy season is just now beginning. It's not that they really have a rainy season, but at least the time of year where we get rain that comes into Israel. Uh, comes in at this time of year, but this type of a blaze, even the rainy season, just cannot produce enough rain to put out that type of wildfire. So it's very, very serious uh, without any question, you know, hands down completely. Uh, anyway, let's go to El Salvador, 7.2 earthquake. Issue a tsunami alert uh, after the 7.2 earthquake tremors hit off the coast of El Salvador and was also felt in Nicaragua, which is being lashed by a hurricane as well. Uh, I just happened to grab it real quick off here of Al Jazeera because I was looking at another story as well. But anyway, says authorities in El Salvador have issued a tsunami alert after a 7.2 magnitude earthquake shook the country and neighboring Nicaragua. The Pacific Ocean tremor occurred on Thursday about 120 kilometers off the coast of El Salvador at a depth of 33 kilometers, according to the U.S. Geological Survey, which also confirmed the magnitude given by the El Salvadorian officials. Shaking was also felt in Nicaragua, capital of uh, Mangua. As, as far as uh, away as Costa Rica, the capital of San Jose, there were no immediate reports of damage or casualties, but I'm sure, especially in this part of the world there, we probably are going to hear about casualties. 7.2 is definitely no earthquake to sneeze at. I mean, we are seeing biblical type of events that are happening, and I do have a very special message that I'll be bringing out on the Noon Institute. I'll get into that in just a moment here. I'm going to share just a little uh, thought with you on that. Let's go back over here to the Syrian Air Force uh, with the Turkish soldiers in eastern, uh, East Aleppo. Now, according to uh, some reports, such here as the Wall Street Journal, Turkey says three soldiers killed in Syria's airstrike. Uh, in some places, they're not wanting to say where it happened at. Uh, another one here, they're trying to say it happened, I think, in El, El, uh, El Bad is another place as Turkey is, it will retaliate after, th uh, after three of its soldiers were killed in what the military said was a suspected Syrian airstrike, the first such deaths at the hands of the Syrian government forces since Ankara's launched a cross-border incursion in August. The attack occurred at around 3.30 a.m. local time on Thursday during a Turkish-backed Syrian rebel operation in northern Syria, the Turkish military said in a statement. Uh, Again, they're trying to deny the fact that according to the Iranian news that these soldiers were actually killed in eastern Aleppo. You have to remember now, Russian news had stated, we brought this out on Israeli News Live a little while back, some months ago, uh, and it wasn't from President Putin per se, but there were officials in Russia that did say that Aleppo would be the red line even for Russia. Uh, and there's also some speculating that this, uh, this attack, of course, it comes on the anniversary of the downing of the, uh, the Sukhoi 
uh, uh, Russian bomber that was down by the uh, Turkish government as well. So it's kind of interesting that it comes during that particular time frame. Uh, very interesting indeed. Anyway, Damascus, the Turkish re uh, regime accused the Syrian Air Force of killing three of its soldiers in the eastern countryside of the Aleppo governorate on Thursday, according to a statement released by the Turkish Armed Forces. The Syrian force uh, was conducting airstrikes near the key town of Al-Bab when one of their bombs hit Turkish military positions in the area. The Syrian Ministry of Defense has not com commented on this matter despite all the allegations made by Ankara on Thursday. The Syrian Air Force has been targeting the Islamic State of Iraq and Al-Sham, ISIS militants in the Al-Bab Plateau and Deir al-Hafir planes lately. Now wouldn't it be kind of ironic if Bashar al-Assad doesn't pull one of those little fast ones like the Obama administration does and lets Turkey know, oh, sorry, it was an accident. Didn't know your guys were in eastern Aleppo. That would be kind of funny. So much for the propaganda of RT and Sputnik, right? I don't believe so. You know, I, I, like I said, I realize that all these different news groups they have their own propaganda agenda. I understand that. But an undercover, German undercover guy goes inside of RT to investigate them from another news agency only to find out that RT was not the propaganda machine that they claimed it to be. Isn't that kind of interesting? But he also revealed how that German news is a propaganda machine. All right, anyway, with all this aside, let me kind of share something with you that I discovered recently. I've really been into searching the, the name of Yeshua, Jesus, as it were. And I've got a very special message that I'm about to, to bring out, things that God has been dealing with my heart on. I realize now what Rome is up to. I, there's some things that's, been come, that's come to my heart that I cannot wait to bring out. I'm hoping to put this together uh, at the latest this weekend on Shabbat. It'll be our Shabbat message. I might get it together as early as tomorrow night and present this to you guys. But there was one thing in particular that I discovered that I've been looking at very deeply. I, I was, I've been doing a lot of research on the divine name of God. And of course, many people say Yahweh, Yehovah, Jehovah, whatever the case may be. But if you remember when God, or when Moses asked God, when they, they will ask me, what is your name? What do I say? Well, the divine creator says, tell them, which means has sent me unto you. But he actually first says, asha and some people translate they, that as being I am, which I am, or I am that I am. Some translate that as a future tense because of the Aleph. I will be that which I will be. But in reality, Ihaye means will be. Not as a future tense. In other words, God is saying to Moses, I have willed myself into being. That is his name. You cannot, how can, how can the creator himself have a name? Someone would have to be there to give him the name. But if he is the divine father, and then who is the one that could give him his name? Unless he gives himself a name. All right? So I, I was looking, that, looking at that, and I was thinking along the lines as well about Yeshua, Jesus. And I kept feeling in my heart, is there a deeper essence in the way we call him as far as our Savior? Now, Yeshua, by the way, means uh, uh, Yahweh saves, or it means literally y Yeshua is salvation. Okay, this is what Yeshua really means. Yeshua is just simply the word for salvation in the Hebrew language. So I thought about how that we would say, for example, uh, uh, where God says to Moses, I am. That's the main way people translate it. I am. I exist, in other words. And really, I am is a good way to translate the word uh, for because it is will be, in other words. In other words, he willed himself into being, which is an I am. It is an existence. He is the existing one, we might say, when we say the word All right, so the I am. Now, Jesus, or Yeshua, whichever way you prefer to call him, or Yahshua, or Yahushua, there's different ways that people have come up with saying the divine, or, you know, the name for 
Jesus, what most people know as Jesus from KJV, the Greek version of this, you know, but I begin to think about this. We know that according to Hebrews 13, 8, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? That's the same thing. That's what we derive from the name of, say, for example, Yehovah or Yahweh. It is he was, he is, and he will ever be. And I thought of this. When, if you look at Jesus, he is, God is made flesh, in other words. It is the Son of God, but he's made flesh on the earth. Then what about then, instead of just saying that he is salvation, if we were to say that I am is salvation, or I save. So I took the word, and I looked at this a little bit more deeply. And then I thought, if I were to, if I were to take the name of Jesus, as we say it in Hebrew, Yeshua. Yeshua is just salvation. If we were looking at him like the I am, and just say, I save, or I am salvation, just like the I am spoke to Moses, I am salvation. How would we write this? Well, it's simple. You would have Yeshua, but you would add a Yod at the end. I am salvation. Yeshui. Yeshui, the He would actually drop in this case here, and you just put the Yod after the I am. But the odd thing was, was I took and I ran this through a translator system afterwards just to see what would come up. And then I was blown away. Yeshui, which is, would be translated into English, it would be saying, I am salvation. If you were to say Yeshui, I am salvation, is the very word that Rome stole. The Vatican, the Romans, the Vatican Orthodox Catholic religion stole Jesus' name when they called the group that they have Jesuits. Yeshui in Hebrew, which means I am salvation, literally, I am salvation, which would only belong to Yeshua himself, to Jesus, that is. The Vatican stole that title for themselves. Jesuits. That's how it translates. In Hebrew, if you were to take and you were to type in Yeshui, which would be, I am salvation, Yeshui. It'd be Yod Shin, Vav Ein Yod, Yeshui. I am salvation. Jesus, in other words. Yeshua, he is the I am, has become salvation. It translates to the word Jesuit. And so right now, you have the Pope of Rome, sitting in the Vatican, Pope Francis, the first Jesuit Pope ever. And his very title as a Jesuit is declaring to the world that he is salvation. I am salvation is what his title declares him to be. That's about as blasphemy as it can get. But what you're going to really be shocked about is the message that goes with it. I'll share that this Shabbat. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.